Eddie, thank you for joining me, and I suppose it's a bit of a late uh, welcome, but welcome to the club. How have you settled in so far? I've enjoyed it, um, obviously apart from um, I missed a few games because of the suspension, but good set of boys, and obviously still sitting top of the league four games to go, so we're sort of uh, just about there, so you know, come on our next four games, we'll be up you know, in the league, so I a lot to look forward to. How did you rate today's course? That was a local derby, tough of the table, was a... Did, was it a big game for you as well as for all the fans? Yeah, I think we were all you know, looking forward to it. Uh, when you see the fixtures, you want to play that growth, but when you see it, there's that, that much to play for, one point, four games to go, and you know, there was a lot of stake, and you could tell that maybe the game was, because it was end-to-end -end and scrappy, and tackles flying in, second balls, uh, everyone had a go at the ref, so it was enjoyable, it was hard work, um, and a point was probably fair in the end. So you came to us from Spartans, isn't it, in the Lone League? Did you, I mean obviously it's good to go up a league, have you noticed the difference from Spartans to playing at League 2? Yeah, there were some games at Spartans that the, the game was pretty easy, we'd win you know, 5-1, 6-2 and stuff like that, but in this league there's no easy games, like every team's, there's not much between them, even when we played Cowden Beef the first half, you know, they, they played well against us, and uh, every game there's fine margins uh, between the teams, so you know, you need to do your job properly and hopefully see yourselves over the line. So you contract here until the summer, or are you going to be here this season after? Or no, I've signed um, 18 months, so I'll be here next season as well, so hopefully I'll be in the one by then. You're looking forward to that, I'm sure you'll be looking forward to that challenge of playing in a, once again another higher league. Well, that was the, the main thing about uh, signing here when you know, I seen where we were in the league. Um, and the manager phoned me, you know, it was too big an opportunity to turn it around, so age of 32 now, so. You know, so you want a league title, and if you get back into League One playing again, then you might be some achievement. Definitely. So we've seen you even in just this short time. You've played in quite a few positions. You've been left back, left mid, central mid. Is there a position that you like the most, or are you just happy to be on the field? I'm just happy to play. I don't. I don't mind. I'm enjoying playing centre midfield. You know, um, in the holding role, and you know, breaking things up and playing, and letting the boys in front of me go and play. Um, but if the manager asked me to play left back and play there, and you know, I'll play anywhere. I've played right back as well, so um, I don't mind playing as we are play as long as I'm playing on a Saturday. There's not much sitting on the bench or in the stand watching a game on a Saturday, so as long as I'm on the pitch playing, I don't mind. So whereabouts did you usually play at Spartans? Was that um, when I first went there? I was playing centre half or left back, and then um, towards the end they put me in the holding role, centre midfield. Um, I was playing there, but I played that a couple of times. I was at Dundee as well, and had injuries and stuff, so. Um, I'm used to it, and uh, as I say, as long as I'm getting on the pitch playing, then I'm happy. And it's always good to play in a variety of roles because you can certainly definitely cover for people. It gives, things. You, it gives you more chance in a game, I suppose. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you're looking forward. So that was local derby this week, and another local derby next week. So I'm sure you're looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah, so I'm looking forward. You know, I've got four games to go. It's in our hands. We win the four games, and we're champions. So we go again next Saturday. As I said, there's not much team in the game, so. Um, if we get back to basics, we talked about you know, keeping clean sheets again, stop conceding goals. We also like scoring, so I think again, if we go back to, to Montrose next Saturday and, and keep our clean sheet, I think we'll win the game because we always score goals. Uh, thank you for your time, Eddie, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your time here. Cheers. Thank you for joining me today, Jamie. Uh, as uh, you know, we've got a few questions from various fans and also some of your teammates. Right. So, just kick off with a nice sort of easy question. Who's your favourite team growing up and who's your favourite player? Um, my favourite team was probably Manchester United. Uh, and my favourite player was Paul Scholes. And he also played football. He's unbelievable. On the ball, off the ball. Behind the scenes, if I've, as I've heard, I've read a few books and stuff like that, so I would say I had both schools in Manchester United. Good, good. So what was the first match that you ever went to, and do you remember much about it? My first match was Scotland, it was a Scotland game, I can't remember who against, and it was when Celtic Park wasn't even finished. It was, a, it was that long ago. <laughs> uh, I went with my mum and father, it was good, I really enjoyed it. I still actually got the scarf and the flag in the house, so I keep that so I... I can't remember, I think it was maybe Ukraine, or, I can't remember. <laughs> no worries. Um, so another one is, uh, has it been difficult uh, having to train further away now, because you're at Forfra, of course, before you are at Airdrie? 
Um, I, I know, obviously the travel kicks in to this part of the season that later on in the stage when obviously your muscles and you try to get recovery and stuff like that, but where we are now, that, that adrenaline pushes out the buzz, everything that kicks it all the way. So I would say, nah, Fofa have been great to me and I hope to obviously give them a winner's medal back. And we all hope so. Um, so this one comes all the way from Wales. Uh, so what's your favourite thing about being part of Fofa Athletic? The whole, the whole environment, the, the team. It's like a family up here. It's like when, when I was at Airdrie, you obviously get the Celtic Rangers, you get Albion Rovers and Airdrie. Up here it's just Fofa, which is brilliant. And as my mum and dad say, I know like, the fans have been exceptional this year. And, Hopefully the last four games you turn out numbers and give us the support. And so it's everything, the team, yeah. the backroom yeah, staff, the, back the fans. Staff, Matt, the kit man, <laughs> he's brilliant. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. But um, I have him. Absolutely have him. Excellent. And yeah, this one from Ian. Uh, do you play any other sports other than football? I play golf. Um, I try my best to play golf. Um, my handicap's 14. Hope to get it down whenever the season finishes during the season now. Can't really play a lot of golf, no. Um, but no, it's golf and badminton. I like a lot of badminton during the winter to keep obviously fat. <laughs> but aye, that's that's the two sports I like to play. Okay. And so well, you've told us about golf and badminton, but outside for what are your other main interests, your other hobbies and things? Um, during the summer it's golf. After after games or Sundays I go and play golf. Maybe tomorrow, blah blah blah. I like to go and watch football with my friends. Now, obviously, being so far away, I don't go home till late on a Saturday night, so I tend to just stay in, and then on a Sunday I'd go and watch football with them. Yeah, apart from that, there's nothing really else. That's about it. Football's your whole world, football, basically. Football, basically. <laughs> basically. Um, so, there you go. Um, is, are you related to any of the management team? No. no, I can guarantee that was one of the. <laughs> That's one of your teammates who <laughs> wishes to remain anonymous. <laughs> um, so we saw an example of this uh, today from uh, Jim says, uh, not Lister. Uh, when you put those balls into the box and they either get the keeper running to the near post or land on top of the net, are they meant as crosses or shots? <laughs> I would say crosses, but it's that bad it looks like shots. <laughs> I try my best to put the ball in, in the middle of the middle of the box for gym master Josh, whoever's in the box and um, sometimes it doesn't go off and everybody thinks you should do good crosses but if it, if it goes in then I would tell the it was a shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so what kind of car do you have and I've what would a, be your dream? I've got a Mercedes C-Class to now and my dream car is a Proba Range Rover, a black Range Rover. Whether I get one I don't know, doubt it but you never know. <laughs> And uh, what is so in your car? What music do you have in your car? I tend to play a lot of R&B, Drake, uh, Fifty Cent, Chris Brown. Whenever Cox is travelling, he hates that kind of music. <laughs> He's old school. He likes uh, the GBX Clyde One. So whenever I'm travelling with him, I get none of it. No radio tours and whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so, do you have a girlfriend or a wife? No. So you're still single for all those yes. ladies. <laughs> um, do you have a pre-match ritual? And if so, what is it? I've not got, no, I've not really got a pre-match ritual. No, you, you probably tend to see me every game. Three steps off a partner and a running jump. I tend to do that every game. That's just a superstition. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably it. That's just oh, a yeah. Yeah. Uh, Here we go, another one. Uh, who would you say in, is the thickest and most? Who's the most intelligent in the dressing room? Well, the thickest is definitely be my left back. Guys, he is unbelievably thick. Well, I grew up across the throw throw bridge two weeks ago on a Thursday, and his mum phones where he. We're just going to cross that bridge at Edinburgh, and I have to say to him that's the throw throw bridge. He doesn't know that bridge. Now, the most intelligent probably probably Gavin Swanky. He's as you can see, he's, he's a great player. His intelligence on the park is the same off the park and training and stuff like that. He's very smart. Um, he does come up with some stupid stuff, but he tends to keep quiet with him. <laughs> so that's aye, that's that. Okay. So, uh, and uh, another one from your teammates. Who would you say is the gaffer's pet? David Cox. 
Coxie, definitely. You'll bat me for this, but <laughs> hopefully he doesn't see it, but definitely Coxie. <laughs> okay. And so this is actually the final question. We've got through them quite quick. So if you could invite any sports star, past or present, to dinner, who would it be and what would you serve? Um, I'd probably be Pirlo. I would invite Pirlo just to chat. Mm -hmm. Just to basically chat in his career. It's been unbelievable. I read his book, which is Out This World, uh, and it bit Italian food on. <laughs> so he'd probably ask for macaroni cheese. <laughs> <laughs> So you would cook yourself or? I'd probably yeah. cook myself. Not very good, but no. <laughs> if you did it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that was, that was excellent and light-hearted, Jamie. So thanks for your time. Thank you very and much. That's great.